Hello everyone, thank you for coming to today's tutorial where I'm going to be showing you how to do a skeleton loader. And one of the reasons I think it's important as far as the user interface and the user experience is concerned is it gives the users um, a way to know that something is loading, that something's happening. And it gives the perception that the website is actually loading faster. Um, the, the, the more your users uh, stay connected and engaged into your website, the more time you're going to have them engaging within your website, the better SEO you're going to have, the better um, conversions you're going to have. And also it looks a lot more professional, which goes all hand in hand with what I am saying. So basically, uh, we're going to be building a simple uh, skeleton loader that you can use for loading when you, whenever you're loading images or blog posts or a lot of content that's repeated and maybe it takes a little bit to do that query and get everything from the server. It's always good to show something like this. Uh, like I said, you have a lot of benefits, so we'll get right to it. Please enjoy. The loader we're going to be making today looks something like this. And like I said, you can turn it into anything. So this, for example, can be a little uh, profile with the image over here. You can make this a circle, a square, a triangle, and then some content to the right. Um, it's pretty simple. So I'll be extending that with you guys and showing you a little bit of how to do that. I found this on Stack Overflow. It's an answer provided by... Um, well, can't really see here, but whoever did it, awesome kudos to, to you and awesome. This is great. And it has some of the effects that I'm going to be adding. So if you look at this nice wave effect, it's like kind of like where American Express and some of the other big companies do. And then this one is like a pulsing effect. So it's also very nice. I think this one's by YouTube. Um, so that's the one that we're using right now. And let's get right to it. So I finally built everything. It took me a while. Uh, believe it or not, building with, um, I don't use Laravel Mix that much. I always used Webpack. I got used to doing that. And honestly, I think it's, in my opinion, it's a lot better. It's a lot faster. It's a lot, uh, you, you have to wait a lot less when you are using Webpack. But anyway, I'll probably show you on the next video on how to do that. So you can install it on your Laravel application or wherever else you want to install it. I think it's better, honestly. I love Jeffrey Wave, but I think it's better. So here's some of the CSS that I copy over from, from the code provided in Stack Overflow. I've already done that and I've already created the loader that you saw on the initial screen. So right here. And this is what it looks like when, when it's all said and done. I am using Bootstrap. You don't really have to use Bootstrap. You can use anything else that you want. Um, and now Let's see, this is the pulsing effect. And I really haven't seen the wave effect, so let's take a look at that. I know CSS, I just know no CSS enough to be like, do my own custom animations, but I can definitely find my way around and know what, what it is. And I actually started as a HTML and CSS developer uh, for like about two years or so. And then I started going more deeper into uh, backend and whatnot. Anyway, so if we continue here, yeah, that's very nice. So let's say uh, I'll walk you through exactly how I did it. So basically, you obviously need the content that you're going to be adding. In this case, it's going to be a placeholder. So let's add another one. And if we do something like this, we need a placeholder. And we want to add the pulse effect. And... Uh, we also want to make that show on loading. So I'll show you the view component, how that is. And you know what? Let's actually throw this inside of component now that I have you guys here. So we'll make this a little bit more fun than just uh, showing you exactly what I did. So I'm just, you know what? Um, so if it has that, probably add that in there. Saddle a little bit more right here. And I actually messed something up. Yeah, there you go. Then we're going to do pulse. We don't need the offset. So that's what sense centers everything. Uh, we're going to do this and we'll probably do another one. So we just copy that. 
and you can also do this this is why i love uh, uh idea or php storm web storm um golang they're all amazing honestly this is my favorite editor of choice and kudos to the team for this wonderful editor uh, obviously i've been using it for a while so i got really used to this one i can't live without it honestly and i'm missing the little padding top i'm five in here so in bootstrap that's padding top and then five it's the max level that they have by default you can change those obviously if you're using scss or sas you can change those uh, va values to make it more padding or more margin so here that's nice so we have a couple of uh i think they're all wave i don't see the pulse going in here so is it pulsing come on pulse oh yeah it is yeah so this one's pulsing pulsing wave very nice so and just for looks let's make it all look like a wave all right, so this is how uh, the end result is gonna be. We're gonna drop this right into a view component. I'm gonna drop the code right after on my blog, so you can go and get it from over there. I'll also probably put it on Get somewhere so you can get it, or actually just my blog. Get into my blog. Um, so here is the loading attribute. I'm using just a view uh, global instance, and if, if you notice, this is from my previous tutorial. Uh, with the overlay so I want to isolate this component and the way we're going to do that is we're going to go in side of resources JS components and let's make our own component here we'll call it skeleton loader all right and we're going to need some content so I'm going to take all this Leave the container there. Actually, you know what? It gives me more flexibility if I take the entire thing and, and that way the content's not being dictated from the top, but rather you can uh, use the content from, from within the component. And then if you have other things that you wanna add in there, then you can just obviously do that. So where is my skeleton? Uh, skeleton, oh, what I do with it? I was just in there. So did I delete it? Let me check. Or never created it. Okay. So let's go again. Skeleton loader. Dot, uh, it's going to do that view anyway. All right. So we just dropped everything in there. And let's move. Um, let's move from the global. I'm going to move this to loading attribute. So the or the loading data the state be more precise and we're going to be setting the data right here when you are setting data from a view component data it's actually a function that returns the data or an object with the data and that's what we're doing right here if you notice how you do it in the instance it's different so it's basically an object that returns the data over here is a function that returns the data. This is actually the same as saying function data, function, function data, blah, blah, you know, something like that. Um, all right, so we'll have that. And now that's loading. And let's see if uh, skeleton loader we don't have it registered yet so we need to go and register this component in the app that js and we'll do that something like this so components and then skeleton skeleton loader we'll do skeleton loader right here okay so we have that skeleton loader ready to go and we're going to register it right over here with these components so skeleton loader and basically this allows us to uh call it from within the instance and the instance it's actually whatever is inside this id right here you can watch my previous video i explained a little bit more about that and then that's what you see right here so that's how it's binding 
how how it knows what it is this is the instance this is a component within the instance and within that component we are doing the placeholder and all of this so let's see if that's still working 